This is our 1973 Mustang with a 302 two barrel. And what I want to point out first is that 1973 has the exhaust gas recirculation valve. The reason I bring that up is because you notice that the vacuum hose feeding it has a T. And that T goes up to a four-way vacuum T on the firewall. This first and second piece of it goes to the automatic transmission modulator main outlet in the back of the um, modulator. The third and fourth hose that goes to the vacuum modulator to a secondary diaphragm fed by the vacuum hose going to the EGR valve. Now, I can't remember if it's 72 or 71 that did not have a vacuum modulator. For sure 73 does, maybe 72. So if you have a 71 or earlier, you definitely have only two vacuum hoses to be concerned about up here. One coming from the intake manifold, going to that T, then that T feeds a metal line, vacuum line, that goes down to the transmission modulator. The reason that's important is because we need to be able to take off the correct vacuum line from the T to test the vacuum modulator to see if the valve has a diaphragm that is leaking or ruptured. And if you have an EGR valve and a dual diaphragm, then check the second diaphragm also. In order to test the vacuum modulator for the transmission, I use a vacuum tester. I'll put my finger over this and pull and show what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to pull a vacuum and hold it. I already unplugged the vacuum hose going down to the modulator. What I've done is I've connected my vacuum tester unit to a vacuum hose that leads down to the transmission modulator. Now I'm going to pull and you see we have vacuum and it is holding so that diaphragm is good, not leaking. If it didn't hold the vacuum, it's leaking. If it won't start a vacuum to begin with, it's ruptured or you plugged into the wrong vacuum hose. If you have an EGR valve with a dual diaphragm vacuum modulator for a transmission, you need to test both vacuum hoses going down to it to make sure that neither one of the diaphragms are leaking.